Greetings and welcome to another edition of Sefer Moments. I'm Dr. Stephen Pigeon. Today we're going to be discussing Baruch, 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 one of my favorite subjects. In the studies of those scriptures which we have determined should be included under a single cover, which we call the Et Sefer, we reviewed the deuterocanonical text called Baruch. This text has been widely accepted throughout the biblical world and has been included in the 1611 KJV AV, that is the King James Version Authorized Version, the 1560 Geneva Bible, and the 1256 Catholic Canonized Text. Because we have included both the Sefer Baruch and the Apocalypse of Baruch, we reference the first book as Baruch Rishon, or One Baruch, also known as the Prophecy of Baruch. Baruch Rishon, one Baruch, presents a certain unity in point of subject matter, so that most of those who maintain that the whole work was written in Ivrit, that is Hebrew, admit also its unity of composition. Some contemporary critics believe that the work was a compilatory process and that its unity is due to the final editor who put together the various documents which centered upon the Jewish exile. However, this is speculation which can be as readily explained by a single authorship. This method of composition does not necessarily conflict with the traditional authorship of the Sefer Baruch Rishon, one Baruch. Many of the sacred writers of what is commonly considered the Bible were also compilers, and their accusation may also be imputed to them as Baruch Rishon has always been numbered among them. What is the nature of this text? Well, let's take a look at a couple of verses. Baruch Rishon, 1 Baruch, chapter 1, verses 13 through 19. Pray for us also unto Yahweh Eloheinu, for we have sinned against Yahweh Eloheinu, and unto this day the fury of Yahweh and his wrath is not turned from us. And ye shall read this sefer, which we have sent unto you to make confession in the house of Yahweh upon the feasts and solemn days. And ye shall say, To Yahweh Elohinu belongs righteousness, but unto us the confusion of faces, as it is come to pass this day unto them of Yahud and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to our kings, and to our princes, and to our priests, and to our prophets, and to our fathers. For we have sinned before Yahweh and disobeyed him, and have not hearkened unto the voice of Yahweh Eloheinu, to walk in the commandments that he gave us openly. Since the day that Yahweh brought our forefathers out of the land of Mitzrayim unto this present day, we have been disobedient unto Yahweh Eloheinu, and we have been negligent in not hearing his voice. Well, this is pretty clear, isn't it? Again, just a couple of examples here as the entirety of the Sefer Baruch Rishon, one Baruch, is worth reading. Another example from Baruch Rishon, one Baruch, chapter 2, verses 12 through 15. O Yahweh Eloheinu, we have sinned, we have done wickedness, we have dealt unrighteously in all your ordinances. Let your wrath turn from us, for we are but a few left among the heathen where you have scattered us. Hear our prayers, O Yahweh, and our petitions, and deliver us for your own sake, and give us favor in the sight of them which have led us away, that all the earth may know that you are Yahweh Eloheinu, because Yasharel and his posterity is called by your name. Now, of course, many texts here read Israel and his posterity. However, as we have discussed in many other blogs, we have elected to use the name Yasharel, because it conveys the true meaning of the word and demonstrates that, in fact, his people are called by his name. Baruch Rishon, 1 Baruch, chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. Hear, Yasharel, the commandments of life. Give ear to understand wisdom. How happens it, Yasharel, that you are in your enemy's land, that you are waxen old in a strange country, that you are defiled with the dead, that you are counted with them that go down into Sheol. You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. For if you had walked in the way of Elohim, 
you should have dwelled in peace forever. Now again, we speak of the way. Remember what Hamashiach had to say about this in Yahukanan, or the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6. Yahusha said to, unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And what is this way? Tehillim, Psalm 119, verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the Torah of Yahuwah. It appears then that David and Baruch are on the same page concerning this teaching. Baruch had personal experience with this teaching and as he gives us his testimony in chapter 4, saying, Baruch Rishon, 1 Baruch, chapter 4, verses 10 through 13. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. With joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow, and forsaken of many, who, for the sins of my children, am left desolate, because they departed from the Torah of Elohim. They knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments, nor trod in the paths of discipline in his righteousness. Finally, we get to the prophecy of, sec of the second Exodus, found in Baruch Rishon, 1 Baruch, chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Put off, O Yerushalayim, the garment of mourning and affliction, and put on the comeliness of the glory that comes from Elohim forever. Cast about you a double garment of the righteousness which comes from Elohim, and set a diadem on your head of the glory of the everlasting. For Elohim will show your brightness unto every country under heaven. For your name shall be called of Elohim forever. The peace of righteousness and the glory of Elohim's worship. Arise, O Jerusalem, and stand on high, and look about toward the east, and behold, your children gathered from the west, unto the east by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the remembrance of Elohim. For they departed from you on foot and were led away of their enemies. But Elohim brings them unto you exalted with glory as children of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Again, this is just a summary, but in our exploration of sacred texts, we found another sefer, the Apocalypse of Baruch, which we have entitled Baruch Sheni, to Baruch. While the prophecies of Baruch Rishon, one Baruch, are important to this book, the Apocalypse of Baruch stands out as vital. We have enjoyed the most contemporary reviews of this text as it is revealed anew to the Word in the Et Sefer. Excuse me, to the world in the Et Sefer. There are some who doubt the authenticity of the text of Baruch Sheni to Baruch. However, A.F.J. Klein writes, Quote, Until recently, the Apocalypse of Baruch was only known from a Syriac manuscript dating from the 6th or 7th century A.D. Since the beginning of this century, two fragments have come to light in Greek. Uh, that is 12, 1 to 13, 2, and 13, 11 to 14, 3, from the 4th or 5th century. Small fragments of the text, again in Syriac, have been discovered in lectionaries of the Jacobite Church. However, no fewer than 36 manuscripts are known because it once belonged to the canon of scriptures in the Syriac-speaking church." Unquote. At the Sefer Publishing Group, we have always been excited about this particular Sefer. There are so many passages deserving of citation, but we can only look at a few here. For further review, please see the Et Sefer. Baruch Shani to Baruch, chapter 1, verse 4. For this reason, behold, I bring evil upon this city and upon its inhabitants, and it shall be removed from before me for a time, and I will scatter this people among the other nations, that they may do good to the other nations, and my people shall be chastened, and the time shall come when they will seek for the prosperity of their times. The amazing part of this prophecy is found in the words, it shall be removed from before me for a time. It is not the destruction of the temple that is so significant, but that Baruch predicts a return Consider the prophecy found in chapter 25, Baruch Sheni to Baruch 25, verses 2 through 4. You too shall be preserved till that time, till that sign which El Elyon will work for the inhabitants of the earth in the end of days. 
This, therefore, shall be the sign. When a stupor shall seize the inhabitants of the earth, and they shall fall into many tribulations, and again, when they shall fall into great torments, and it will come to pass when they say in their thoughts by reason of their much tribulation, El Elohim no longer remembers the earth, yea, it will come to pass when they abandon hope that the time when they awake. No blog would be complete on Baruch Sheni to Baruch without a discussion of the passage found in chapter 27. Baruch Sheni to Baruch 27, verses 1 through 14. And he answered and said unto me, Into twelve parts is that time divided, and each one of them is reserved for that which is appointed for it. Two, in the first part, there shall be the beginning of commotions. And in the second part, there shall be slayings of the great ones. And in the third part, the fall of many by death. And in the fourth part, the sending of the sword. And in the fifth part, famine and withholding of rain. And in the sixth part, earthquakes and terrors. Wanting, and in the eighth part, a multitude of specters and attacks of the Shadim, or devils. And in the ninth part, the fall of fire. And in the tenth part, rapine and much oppression. And in the eleventh part, wickedness and unchastity. And in the twelfth part, confusion from the mingling together of all of those things aforesaid. For these parts of time are reserved and shall be mingled one with another and minister one to another. To unravel this mystery, we begin with the teaching of Kepha, that is to say, Simon Peter. Kepha Sheni, or 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 8. But, beloved, do not be ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. If we then agree that six days in six thousand years is six thousand years from the fall of Adam to the ultimate coming of Mashiach, then the mystery of this verse begins to unfold, because we can divide the six thousand years into twelve parts of approximately five hundred years apiece. There is nothing stating that each part must be equal in time, so this is an assumption. But let's go with the assumption for this discussion. In the first period, there is the beginning of commotions. In these years, we see the slaying of Havel and the rise of Tubal-Cain and the beginning of wickedness. In the second period, there should be slayings of the great ones. What can be meant by this? Does this not reference the Nephilim and their progeny, the Eliu, the Rephaim? And in the third period, the fall of many by death. This, of course, describes the flood and the death of almost all living things. In the fourth period, the sword is sent as conquering of one tribe over another, begins with the conquest of Nimrod. And in the fifth part, the withholding of rain describes that famine that came upon the earth during the time of Yosef, the seven years of plenty and the seven years of intense famine. And in the sixth period, earthquakes and terrors. Consider here the words of Amos, or Amos. Amos, chapter 1, verse 1. The words of Amos, who was among the herdsmen of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Yasharel in the days of Uziyahu, king of Yahudah, and in the days of Yarobam, the son of Yoash, the king of Yasharel, two years before the earthquake. This earthquake would be a significant marker as all things concerning the whole of the house of Yasharel would then begin to fall. Therefore, Baruch Shani to Baruch gives us no description of the seventh period, for it is within this period that Baruch was living and prophesying. Now, once we move into the eighth period, serious and difficult prophecy begins to emerge as Baruch predicts that a multitude of specters and attacks of the Shedim devils would arise. It is within this period that the house of Yasharel would be taken, and the house of Yahud would fall. The Elohim and the idols of Babel, then Persia, then Yavan, and then Rome would rise over the Adama Kodesh, the Holy Land. It is in the ninth period that fire would fall on Jerusalem, and the fire would fall on the second temple. The trial by fire of all that remained come on the last of the house of Yasharel before the great and unmarkable diaspora. In the tenth period, there would be pillage and oppression of the believers as the muscle men of Muhammad spread their wings mightily over the Adama Kodesh and Rome rose over the believers in Europe. And in the eleventh period, wickedness and unchastity would arise. This is a period which is not well described. 
but one that allowed for the worst of pagan practices to be established and forgiven throughout the corruption called indulgences. And in the 12th period, a period in which we now live, we find confusion from the mingling together of all those things aforesaid. Isn't that the case? And Baruch Shani, to Baruch continues, of course, with a messianic prophecy. Baruch Shani, to Baruch 29, verses 1 through 3. And he answered and said unto me, Whatsoever will then befall, will befall the whole earth. Therefore, all who live will experience them. For at that time I will protect only those who are found in the selfsame days in this land. And it shall come to pass when all is accomplished that was to come to pass in those parts, that Hamashiach shall then begin to be revealed. One more example, the prophecy of the resurrection to come, and then I will leave you to read the Sefer Baruch Shani to Baruch for yourself. Baruch Shani to Baruch 30, verses 1 through 3. And it shall come to pass after these things, when the time of the advent of Hamashiach is fulfilled, that he shall return in glory. Then all who have fallen asleep in hope of him shall rise again, and it shall come to pass at that time that the treasuries will be opened in which is preserved the number of the souls of the righteous, and they shall come forth, and a multitude of souls shall be seen together in one assemblage of one thought. And the first shall rejoice, and the last shall not be grieved, for they know that the time has come of which it is said that it is the consummation of the times. Before we leave this post, however, I want to alert you to one more thing. Baruch Shalashi, three Baruch, which is why this blog is called Baruch, 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 this is a text that is also known as the second apocalypse of Baruch, which is the narrative and revelation of Baruch concerning those ineffable things which he saw by the command of Elohim when he stood upon the river Jel, weeping over the captivity of Yerushalayim when Abimelech was also preserved by the hand of Elohim at the farm of Agrippa where he was sitting at the beautiful gates where the Holy of Holies lay. In this sefer, the angel of Yahuwah comes to Baruch to show him the mysteries of Yahuwah Chapter 1, verse 8. And the mysteries he shows them are the five heavens. I will leave you with this chapter, 13, verses 1 through 5. Kizeon Baruch Shani, or the second apocalypse, Baruch, also known as three Baruch, not included in the Et Sefer. Chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. And then the other angels came in a like manner, weeping and bewailing and saying with fear, Behold! How we are overclouded, O Yahweh, for we were delivered to evil men, and we wish to depart from them. And Mikael said, You cannot depart from them, in order that the enemy may not prevail to the end. But say to me what you ask. And they said, We pray, Mikael, our commander, transfer us from them, for we cannot abide with wicked and foolish men, for there is nothing good in them, but every kind of unrighteousness and greed. For we do not behold them entering into the called-out assembly at all, nor among spiritual fathers, nor into any good work. But there is murder. They are also in the midst. And where are fornications, adulteries, thefts, slanders, perjuries, jealousies, drunkenness, strife, envy, murmurings, whispering, idolatry, divination, and such like. Then are they workers of such works and of others who are worse. Wherefore we entreat you that we may depart from them. And Mikael said to the angels, Wait till I learn from Yahuwah what shall come to pass. Baruch, Baruch, Baruch. I am so glad I found it.